over the last 15, 20 years, we've seen crazy lawsuits. We saw lawsuits where um, school systems were sued, not for singing, Oh Little Town of Bethlehem, but they were sued for singing Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer because it brought too close of an association to the celebration of Christmas, and they wanted everything about Christmas stamped out. They actually sued a school system. This, this actually happened in Texas. They sued a, sued a school system who was having a holiday party, but they used green and red napkins. How ridiculous is this? <laughs> they sued a firehouse because it put Christmas lights up. It didn't have a nativity scene. They put Christmas lights up and they said, no, 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 no. See, they don't want Christmas in society. And so, you know, when, when somebody's being that ridiculous and that focused, we have to ask ourselves, why is Christmas under attack? Well, I'm going to talk to that, talk to you about that. And why does Christmas matter? It's not just a fun time for family, not just a great time for friends. It is really the central part of our Christianity. Okay? So let's talk about this for just a minute. Here's some of the reasons that Christmas is under attack. Number one, because Christmas is not about Christ's infancy. It is about his deity. It's not just about a baby in a manger. Come on. It's not just about Mary traveling to Bethlehem and... There's no room for the inn, and so they gave birth in a stable, and all the cows, and all the, all the sheep, and all the wise men came, and all the shepherds. It's not just about a baby being born. It's about the fact that God himself came down from heaven, that he grew as, uh, within the womb, the impregnated womb. Come on, Jesus wasn't taken from heaven and stuck in her womb. God impregnated Mary meaning that he was 100% God, 100% man. And she gave birth to the Son of God here on earth. It's not about a baby in a manger. It's about the fact that God is God and decided to come to earth to save us from our sins. Listen, the world is happy to let Jesus just be that baby in the manger as long as you don't talk about his deity. As long as you don't talk about the fact that he came to save this world. As long as you don't talk about the fact that without Christ in our lives, we're doomed. We can't save ourselves. How many figured that out? Somewhere along the way, you figured out, I can't save myself. Let me read to you from John chapter 1, verse 1 through 5, because we have to understand this. The virgin birth is actually central to everything that we believe about Christianity. If there was no baby in the manger who was God incarnate, then there was no cross. You realize if there wasn't a virgin birth fulfilling the prophecy of Isaiah, if there wasn't a virgin birth, then it really didn't matter that Jesus died on the cross because he was just a man and he could not pay the price for our sins. But because he was God that was born as a baby, born in a manger, grew up on the earth, and then laid aside his divinity, and yet took upon himself the sins of us all. Come on, that is what this is about. Let me read to you from John chapter 1. It says, in the beginning was the Word. I love this passage. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Verse 10, he was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world didn't know who he was. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But for as many as received him, how many here have received him? Wave your hand at me, okay? For as many have, who have received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Emmanuel, God with us. 
God clothed in flesh coming to the earth to show us who God really is. You know, through all those years of Judaism, they got really mixed up about who God is. They got really mixed up about his character, about his nature. And Jesus came to the earth to say, let me show you who God is. He wants to heal you. He wants to set you free. He wants to deliver you from demonic oppression. He wants to give you life. And he wants to give you abundant life. He wants to destroy the curse that the enemy's trying to put over your life. He wants to turn everything around for you. He's not a big God with a baseball bat sitting in heaven ready to pound you on the head when you get out of line. He's a God of love. He's a God of righteousness, but he's a God of love. And Jesus said, let me come down here to the earth and show you who I am. That's what Christmas is about. And so we see that it's not just about a baby in a manger. It's about his deity. But it's also not just about removing a nativity scene out of a public square. It's about pushing God out of everything that has to do with our society. A couple of years ago, the American Atheist Association was displaying a billboard in New Jersey at Christmas time, which showed a depiction of the wise men visiting baby Jesus in a manger. And this is what the caption on that billboard said. It said, you know it's a myth. This season, celebrate reason. <laughs> the president of that organization, David Silberman, says, this is a cry for 50 million atheists to rise up against the celebration of Christmas. And we object to be, it being named as a national holiday. See, the enemy hates Christmas. The enemy hates the, the decorations and the lights and the celebration. We're very focused when our children were little on making sure that they understood the, the reason that we celebrated Christmas. We didn't have a Santa Claus in our whole house until they became teenagers. And guess what? They started attacking Santa Claus because he was too much about Christmas and they wanted to push Santa out. Not just Jesus in the manger. They wanted to push Santa out. Can you imagine that? Because they hate Christmas. Because they don't want anybody stopping and pausing and saying, wait a minute, why do we have Christmas? What do we celebrate anyway? So you see, it's not just about the baby in the manger. It's not just about removing a nativity. It's about the fact that they want to push <laughs> Christmas out of our entire culture. We're not going to let it happen. 